I had to make the decision like, hey, we I either need to sell, give away, or just shut down. Lowell, what's up? How you doing, man? Dude, I'm so good, and I'm really excited to have you here. Um, it's been fun uh, working with you guys at Dropified, um, seeing your success. Congrats on that. Um, getting to know you better. Uh, I'm still excited to uh, to visit my wife. Uh, I told my wife about your beautiful home. Uh, she likes that kind of thing, so I'm excited. And you mentioned uh, UTVs that the kids are excited to play around with. So awesome. I know that's going to be a lot of fun. But um, I want to talk about the entrepreneurial journey and you're specifically because I think a lot of people are going to relate with kind of the, the marketing background and then seeing an opportunity in the market and building software. But let's, uh, where are we at today in regards to the business? And I know you're involved in many businesses, but like in regards to Dropified, talk about kind of where you guys are at today. Well, you know what? It's always a journey, right? It doesn't matter where you're at, but uh, uh, things are good. I mean, we're 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 expanding, we're planning, we're always uh, looking at growth opportunities and and just sort of mapping out that whole journey and how to get there, right? So, uh, no, things are good. Things yeah. are good. Yeah. And in regards to the business size and the customers you're serving, the offer, like, what do you guys do? Like, if you had to explain it to other people, obviously, I know, but. Yeah, no, uh, great question. So it's, I mean, really we're a suite of software, but, uh, but if I was just to like nail it down to like, what exactly do you do? We just take all the hard stuff that people have to do with physical products in an e-commerce business and we make it really easy. We automate everything. So, uh, it, it truly was like a, a very, uh, small kind of, you know, drop shipping company. And then we, we turn that into, uh, like that on steroids sort of thing, right? So it, it now, it doesn't matter what level of business that you're in, if you're a complete newbie or you're pretty advanced, there's some pretty cool opportunities that we solve and, and just help people have why, success. Why is drop shipping such a big thing right now? Well, you know, it's always been there and, and I, I don't even love the word drop shipping because it's sort of, it, it's almost like a, I don't know, it's some sort of like arbitrage or something like it automatically associates you with some sort of uh I don't know, like a newbie or a one-time kind of kind of business owner, but but really, drop shipping is it, it, because so many people are new to the whole you know Shopify world and and just e-commerce in general. I I think it's just a term that's used that hey, you know, like I don't have to touch these products, I don't have to do these things, I can just focus on what I do best and you know run my my online store or whatever. But you, you're never actually touching the product. Right. So for some newer entrepreneurs, that's probably like, what's the big deal? Not a big deal. But for some, it just sounds like the right way to build a business. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 pretty cool that you can scale, you know, all sorts of levels and you're not really ever buying inventory until you've already been paid. You're literally not so, buying inventory. Nothing. OK, yeah. so then your job is just purely to market. Now, is it your own brand though? Like, I mean, for those that are kind of new to this, what makes it, you know, a great business model? Well, like we have different levels. So if you were a complete newbie uh, or just somebody that's starting out, you know, and you had your store and you're all excited to sell something. So, you know, the typical way of like sourcing a product and, and trying to, you know, get that into your hands and, and figure out all the different, you know, did you buy it at the right price? Did you, is it even going to sell? Like, you don't know any of these things. Typically, you're taking a pretty good gamble on whatever kind of product that you first sourced or, or inventoried or whatever, right? So um, this way, it makes it like within, you know, 30 seconds, once you've picked your product and, and whatever else, um, you can instantly import that into the software which brings it right into your store. You can edit the, the picture so it's yours on the way in, the, the title, the description, you know, all sorts of pricing uh, metrics and, and matrices based on what you're, you know, if the price goes up, it'll automatically adjust your price. And it's just a fully automated uh, software end-to-end -end sort of thing, right? So, um, and then when you sell that product, right? So it's 2 a.m., you sold a product, whatever, it, it automatically notifies, you know, whoever the drop shipper is to actually send the product to the address. It's all white labeled. So there's no, um, there's no mark. So they of, print your information on the box. 
Right, right. Wow. So this is sort of the entry level thing, and it even puts the tracking number into the software, uh, like which your e- your e commerce store is going to pump out and show, um, the you know, buyer. the end yeah. the end user. Yeah, exactly. You know where exactly that product is. So that's sort of the entry level stuff, and then we have something really on the more high end, just looking at. Uh, you know, where we wanted to see the journey of our customers go. So we started, uh, I think about a year and a half ago, it's called private label on demand. So this is, this is pretty cool. So uh, being that I came from the whole space of like supplements and health and wellness and stuff like that, we, we wanted to see an opportunity where customers could, you know, come up with their own label, their own design, and it would like instantly generate like a mock-up and a product that they could sell, but it wasn't even real yet. So it's in their store and it's like, I don't know, like a protein powder and it has like their own, their own brand, their own look, their own feel, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, if a customer buys that, the label has not even been printed yet. Like nothing is actually real yet until they make a purchase. And when that happens, the label's printed, it's applied, it's your brand. So whatever they saw in your store is exactly what arrives in two to three days in the US, which is pretty crazy. How do you make, I mean, and I want to get to the origin story because it's got to be fascinating, but like, how do you even get the economics to work that way? Like, how do you as Dropify, like you guys are a software company, do you have a Dropify 3PL place for printing off 3D labels? Like, how do you do that? Yeah, no, that's good. Well, yeah, we do. I mean, I think to just start this all yourself, and I've done that in a business before, and as soon as you start touching products or doing something that's out of your your world or out of your space, it starts costing money real fast, right? So uh, we started to look for partners that we could do this with that already had an old school kind of a business and they were open and, and looking for growth and expansion and doing something new. So we sort of pitched them on the idea. Um, and now we have multiple partners that are doing the exact for same different thing. product categories. Yeah, yeah, crazy. How do you come up with this idea? You know what? It's uh, I, I'm a I'm a very visionary kind of person, so I can I can usually see the business through before we even start it. Right. So that's uh, that's a big part of of what I do, and then I I break it all down, reverse engineer it, and and basically make a plan on how to execute and make that happen. Right. So like anybody, there's walls and, and hurdles and stuff like that. But that's those are just problems that you turn into opportunities. Right. But so. but the story of I mean, even your entrepreneurial journey starting, I think, as an agency, right, like a marketing agency, you built a big agency, sold that. Right. Like, tell us the the story of Lowell's, um, you know, starting off in, as an entrepreneur. Oh, geez, man, that was that was way back. I was I was a kid like I was I was literally like pitching little things all the time. I think I was the youngest uh Youngest kid to, uh, you know, sell what? something. Yeah, no. Even when I was a kid, I used to have this paper road. Right, this is where this all started because I always knew that there was something bigger. And uh, my parents were always sort of a, like they were like a teacher and an engineer, right? So they were they were not into the business thing. And any time I had a business idea, it was sort of like just like, you know, it's not a good path, and you should you know continue go to college, get you know typical kind of conversations, but. Um, I kept always challenging that and I sort of believed in what I thought I could do. And, uh, so I was, I was literally, I was, this is a funny story. Cause I was like nine years old, literally. And I thought of this idea that I could go wash windows in this little, uh, this little town that I grew up in. Right. And, uh, so I saved up forever and I, I know this doesn't sound like much, but when you're a kid making like two bucks a day or whatever it was, but I, I saved up 60 bucks to get this, uh, like a window washing kit. Is that how old? I was nine years old. Dude, right? I didn't have 60 bucks at nine years old. That's crazy. Well, that was a long time, a lot of saving, yeah. man. So anyways, got this whole window washing gear, all this kind of stuff. And my parents, I, I couldn't even tell them what I was doing because they they would think this was a horrible idea and I shouldn't spend my money on that, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I did it. And I, I went and I bought all this equipment and I went downtown. I started pitching people on washing the windows for like five bucks a window or whatever. But that day, I think I made about 180 bucks. And, uh, which is crazy at that time, nine years old. So I, I got the bug, I got the itch literally from there. It started a whole, <laughs> just a realm of things. Right. So, and I, I always tried to step it up like, like, uh, you know, years, I don't know, a year into it, let's say it wasn't years, but, uh, the next year I all of a sudden I had competition and all these like, you know, older kids and, and all this kind of stuff. So I thought of this idea, well, what if I, what if I had this contract? So I went around to all the businesses and they must've thought it was so funny. Like this nine year old kid, 
you know, hucking along this bucket of water and stuff like that. But I actually had a little contract on this old dot matrix printer and I'd get them to sign it that if I did their windows all year long, you know, I'd do it for a better price and stuff like that. But it was, it, it just, that's where it all morphed. So it just sort of went from there. So how do you go from that to becoming like a marketing guy? Well, I think I always learned, I learned how to sell things. I learned how to like put a story around things and how to, how to, you know, solve someone's problems. And some of that stuff I didn't know that I understood that till later on. Like I sort of thought like everybody was the same, like we all market the same way we all, but I, I started realizing pretty quick into it that actually not that many people truly know that. Like even people that were working for agencies or working for uh, marketing firms or whatever, they, they actually, uh, they, they knew the lingo, they knew all the stuff, but they didn't actually really know how to execute a proper marketing plan and, and uh, how to have success with that, right? So, so I, that's, that's sort of how that morphed, but yeah, things just grew. I mean, I did a lot of stuff as a kid, uh, you know, ice cream buildings, put myself through college, all this kind of stuff. Had so a little I, ice cream stand? Yeah, we had ice cream stands all over uh, the city, Edmonton. All over? Yeah, how many did you have? I had three of them, right? So, Dude, yeah, that's Yeah, so we had crazy. all the soft ice cream. Cash. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Gotta right? love that. So a good little summer gig and yeah. put myself through college. And then, um, yeah, just sort of, and then I, you know, I was always told like, you got to do the corporate thing. You got to, you know, so I, I did try that out and, you know, I did okay in it, but it How it long just, did you last? That was with uh, Coca-Cola? Yeah, I did. Well, I did that for about seven years, but I, I had the side, side hustles always, going on, right? Always. So, yeah. So, yeah. So I actually, I started a chain of stores selling hot tubs and pools and patio furniture and billiard equipment and stuff like that. So. I, I had that at the same time running Dude, this. Dude, uh, it's crazy. That was pretty fun. So you had a corporate yeah. job at Coca-Cola, uh, retail stores selling hot tubs and pools. Yeah. And then decide to... Event. What made you decide to go all in on just your own thing and leave the corporate thing? Well, we had a, we had a pretty big journey. Our, uh, our middle child, our daughter, was born with half of a heart. And uh, it was it was a a big way to just like take you out of whatever you're doing in life and it just turned you right upside down, right? Yeah. So everything changed when that happened. Uh, we were just sucked right out of our lives and we had to go to a children's hospital that wasn't available here. And we were there for like months and months and months, right? So I, I had to make a decision and, you know, it was, uh, I think it's a lot of time when you, when you have time, when you have space, you got time to just figure things out and you know, you're not really thinking about yourself so much, but I did have some time to go through stuff and I thought, you know what, like life's short, right? And, and why, uh, why try to do all these things for someone else when I could just focus all on myself and, you know, keep growing my own thing, create my own time, you know, do all that kind of stuff. So that's, that was sort of the big transition period. Um, you know, at first, I mean, you, you, you learn how to manage and do all these things at the same time, but at, at first I think, I think it was a little bit of a security blanket, right? You have this, this corporate gig, it's still paying you well. And, you know, you always have that sort of, or you, you feel that you need that for some reason. Right. So, or I did anyways. So felt safe. Yeah. 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 And then what made you decide to do the marketing agency out of all, I mean, dude, you did papers and window cleaning and <laughs> hot tubs. Yeah, so like, well, why, yeah. why did you choose that? Well, you know, for the, for the chain of stores I had, I, I was really good at growing it and marketing it and doing that. So uh, my younger brother, who's quite a bit younger, had had a, quite a bit of success online. So he was always challenging or just saying like, man, you got to take this online. You got to do like your brain online would, you know, you just blow it up sort of thing. Right. So um, and I didn't really know what he meant by that. Like, just like, I, I don't even know what he was selling and was sort of, you know, at, at that time, it was still fairly new, the online space. So it was, it was you know, that newness and just maybe what not understanding. This? this would have been like 90, 95. Oh, dude, this right? is super early. So, yeah. This yeah. isn't even Facebook. This is like. No. Right. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. So it, was, it was. Google. Is Google even out? I mean, so, not even. Man, this is Alta ago. Vista. But yeah, no, yeah. You said exactly. 95, right? Excite, yeah. So that this is when he was yeah. first planting this in, in the brain. Sort okay. Of thing, right. Um, but I didn't go right away. I, I actually, uh, you know, I stuck it out for quite a while and, and I was what just What was he of, doing on the internet back then? He was doing like, uh, like sales letters and Dude, you know, this was like early. before, oh yeah, before VSLs and all that kind of wow. stuff. It was like early on, right? Yeah. So, um, 
So yeah, and, and he was a pretty young guy. I mean, he was nine years younger than me. And I, I was watching him have a lot of success. And again, at that time, there wasn't even near as many people, you know, using the internet and all that kind of stuff, right? So um, so anyways, just watching him, he had the bug in the ear and he kept doing this over and over again. Um, so I, enough where I'm like, you know what, I, I'm going to actually, I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to try out, see how I do sort of thing. And and uh, yeah, it, it, but what's I mean, the first thing you did? Like, what did you, did you buy a course? Did you? Yeah, man, I, I was, I mean, I always wanted to learn, but there wasn't that much stuff out I there know. really. Right. So, um, and, and then what was funny is all these people that I was learning from, you know, I was trying to like live up to what they would do or how they do stuff. But I, I realized pretty quick that that wasn't really what I actually wanted. Like that was, that was their dream or their thing. And I also learned that I, I was actually, I was a lot bigger than most of these guys that were selling some of this stuff, even though I wasn't that big at that time. Right. So, um, so, I mean, I, I failed at lots of things too. Right. I mean, it wasn't just all, all great sort of thing. There was lots of things that didn't work out and stuff, but, um, I got into the, the whole like CPA kind of space and, uh, and just, just uh, creating lots of leads for for companies and so selling as that an affiliate and, kind of promoting people's yeah products. doing some affiliate space and then I, I learned how to like sort of I was really good at the organic space like uh, like SEO. SEO and stuff like yeah. that so uh, we'd fill up like all sorts of um, like pages and sort of own all of those properties like you know it wasn't Certain just like terms. first position yeah. I would own like 20 positions so the first two pages was me and we would have something like um, I don't know, like a dental, dental hygienist or dental surgery, New York or whatever. Right. So we would own all of those pages, but they were pretty generic. Right. So, um, I would sell those properties and just basically sell those leads. And I'd always have a way it was, it was literally like real estate. Like it was so profitable. And if anybody's like, Hey, you know, this isn't really working. Like with one click, we'd turn it all off. Their phones would stop ringing. The, the emails would stop leads start coming, you know, and then we'd already have somebody in the pipeline to come back in Bye. sort of thing. Right. Yeah. And it was, I don't think once somebody canceled and didn't call back within 24 hours, right? Turn so it back on. Yeah. So it was it's just stuff like that, right? So that's that's where it sort of all morphed and, and started. And, and uh, so I, I got, uh, I grew into the whole agency side of thing where it wasn't like agency to direct to uh, business, but it was more, it was more like the agencies, the marketing firms, all that kind of stuff. We were actually selling our services to all of those companies. It's like right? a white label. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that grew and, and it, uh, it it actually, it, it really took off, but it was, you know, when you start scaling things, that's when I started to learn some really hard lessons, like how hard it is to have consistency or, or if you didn't have a system on this, how um, you, you just couldn't follow through on some of the things that you used to be able to follow through because it's not you anymore, right? You have all these people working for you and you're trying to have the same kind of, you know, clarity and all that kind of stuff. But, but, uh, but anyways, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good journey in the marketing side. We, we grew, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly what size we were, but I think we were one of the largest wholesalers for sure. I mean, we had thousands of agencies underneath us. So, wow. So it was, yeah, it was fun. But you mentioned some failures along the way. What are some examples of those? Oh man, we, uh, yeah, we had lots of them. I mean, I was young still and, and doing quite well. So I was, I was fairly cocky at, uh, you know, what, what I thought that I knew, you know, like I think we all sort of, or a lot of entrepreneurs go through that point where that they've maybe built themselves up or, or done enough things that they think that they sort of, they got it all figured out. Yeah, right? everything but, I touch turns to gold. But <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but, but as you start maturing and learning that, that really you, you don't actually know that much at all, right? Like uh, life gives you some pretty hard lessons. So uh, we, we lost some, a couple of like really big clients, probably because we were more, we were just young, we were cocky. We, we thought that we knew a lot more than, than we did. And uh, you know, th there was some of those kind of things, but just, uh, yeah, there was, there was lots of hard lessons. Like just, uh, you know, growing too fast, uh, not having the right systems in place, uh, a lot, a lot of staff, like great staff that, that, uh, you know, I had to grow up too. Like I was always in this entrepreneur mode, but I learned that, you know, to grow into being like a business person is quite a different place, right? Like how, how to manage people and, and, you know, understand what they want and help them get there. And, you know, like it was a whole new stream of things. Well, that, there's a difference between like that's, you know, quadrant, the, the Kiyosaki's quadrant, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like, 
self-employed to then, you know, business owner to kind of investor and like the, the, who you need to become to be able to run a business. Right. Definitely. Like, you know, and I think when you're, you're kind of side hustling, it's, it's kind of that self-employed attitude where you just get people to do stuff, but you know, at scale, you need to learn how to lead. What, what were some of those, um, how did that show up in your business? Not knowing how to do that? Like what were some of the, Oh yeah, man, we were having uh, like from turnover, like really good people that we were losing. They just quit? Yeah, it just quit or, or, or else we were teaching people how to do stuff. And then all of a sudden they were our competitor. That was oh, a good wow. one, right? So we, that happened you know, a lot? Well, at first, because we didn't have all the proper contracts and we, you know, we didn't go through some of that stuff or, uh, you know, just, just even expectations with clients. Like we were growing so fast. So all these agencies were selling things, but they did, they didn't really understand marketing themselves. So they were selling things that were like impossible to do to their clients. And then they wanted us to deliver. Right. So there was always this sort of expectation management and like resetting things and teaching them how to sell and, and going through things. And that's when I started learning that most of these agencies really didn't know that much about marketing, right? And they were so, marketing agencies. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So that, that's when it was like, huh, like an aha moment sort of, of of just, you know, in general or expectations of who you would assume that every agency would just know what they're doing because they're a marketing firm or whatever, right? So, no, I think uh, we both learned that along the journey. That's not the case. And then, so you go from that to learning the e-commerce side really well and, and start teaching people e-commerce. I believe you're, you were involved with an academy um, on the yeah. e-commerce side. Yeah, so I, um, I did really well online, like, uh, like starting a new store. I, I could scale that to you know, millions of dollars in sales. And, and, uh, and then I, I dabbled in Amazon. We did really well on Amazon. Uh, some in the supplement space as well, like pet supplements and stuff like that. So. Uh, so while we were doing that all, uh, just that typical entrepreneur mindset, you know, you start doing all these side hustles that are turning into companies. And because people knew that I knew how to market, all of a sudden I was being involved in all these other companies, right? So I was getting pulled like all over the place and, and honestly just giving every company crumbs or like it wasn't, uh, it was my own problem. Cause I didn't say no, I'm just like, yeah, for sure. Of course I could do that. Of course I could run that. Right. But I was just running out of time. It was, uh, you know, sort of the same sort of thing of what I was saying earlier with my with my daughter and making a choice. And I was always preaching, you know, focus, have focus, you know, follow through, have focus. But I was like the the least focused person. Like I had so many things going on, and it just uh, how many projects or businesses at one point did you? Oh man, I. Uh, I had 17 different companies that was, uh, that like you committed either, some kind yeah. of outcome for. Yeah. And it wasn't like just on the board, like it was like running them, like doing the marketing or, or strategy or, you know, mapping out the, the customer journey, whatever that is. Right. So it was, it was how pretty. How did you tell everybody, how did you make the shift? To get out of those? Yeah. Um, I, I had a really hard, uh, just a hard look at stuff of where I really wanted to go. And, and when I started reversing in or reverse engineering that, I, I just, I, I had to make the decision like, Hey, we I either need to sell, give away or just shut down. But Thanks. is something happening in your life to make you kind of act as a forcing function for you to make that decision? I don't think there was one. It was probably a series of things, but, um, I think, I think I wasn't getting where I really wanted to go, right? So I, I had a plan for myself. And, and death by a thousand paper cuts. And, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? There was just so many things going on that uh, I, I, wasn't, I, just, I wasn't happy anymore. You know, like all the things that I used to get up and just love to do, it was, I was sort of, uh, I was just doing a big job, it felt like, you know? Like I was just getting up, I, like I, grinding. Yeah, you know, and, and and again, starting to listen to some of the people like you got to grind it every day and hustle hard and all this stuff. Like I'm, I was just falling into all this stuff, but I'm like, hold on a second, like what what am I really trying to do here? Where am I where am I trying to go? You know, so um, just just some hard lessons of where I wanted to go. That's when I started, you know, getting rid of the things that weren't really making me happy or I just didn't need. Even if they were making money, it was just like like I remember some of the employees that we gave a bunch. <laughs> of businesses too. They were just like, why are you doing this? And I'm you like, literally just took yeah. customers and said, you can have this if go. We, deliver. If we couldn't sell it fast enough, it was like, Hey, I got an awesome opportunity. How, for how you long guys, did this right? period last? 
I did this in a year and a half, just and I brought this down to like four companies. So it was it was pretty cool. The quick. ones that you're willing to invest yeah. in. Yeah. It's interesting because entrepreneurs can create. You know, you, you, like it's it's complexity is easy. That's right. Simple is hard. And and you looked at this portfolio of companies and said these are the four that I want to make bets on. Did you ever think that even four was too many? Yeah, but they those were all tied together, so there was there some synergy structure. There. Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't it, really it was one encompassing four uh, different departments. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And was one of those Dropified or the early that's days? Right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, recently, um, uh, you know, we were chatting about your decision to bring in a CEO. You know, like how did, you know, to run Dropified, how did you make that decision? How did you recruit? You know, a lot of people dream of the day they can bring in a CEO to run their business and be an owner. Um, how did you pull that off? Well, you know what? I, I think that the way I was looking at things is that, I mean, we all put lids on ourselves, right? W whether you think that you, or I do anyways, I, I, there's definitely some ceilings, you know, some caps, whatever we want to call it. Sort Upper of limit beliefs, yeah, whatever yeah. they are. Yeah. Guy Hendrickson talks about this in the big leap. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So um, I remember actually years ago, I was, I was listening to this. It was actually an event that we put on and we had a speaker talk and it was, uh, it was a really cool thing that stuck out with me. And he was talking about how, uh, he was talking about a flea, like how small a flea was, like the end of this little pencil lead, sort of like microscopic. But a flea can actually jump about four to five feet, right? Which is crazy, like straight up vertical, Based right? So size. I actually Googled this thing. It's, it's actually three feet, right? But, okay. but still crazy, three feet, this little microscopic thing. However, if you put it in like a mason jar, like the most it'll ever jump, obviously, because there's a lid on it, is six inches, right? But if it, ha if it reproduces and there's like little baby fleas and stuff, they will never jump more than six inches, even if you take them out of the jar. And I was sort of thinking about this, uh, how we put lids on ourselves or caps. And, you know, I was thinking this on uh, lots of things, like even a, like a big giant elephant or something like that, and you watch them at, at the zoo or something, and they're locked to, to down with like this tiny little nail. Peg or something. And I'm ground. like, how is that possible? But you know, at one time it was a lot bigger and it just got smaller and smaller and they just sort of gave up. They just know like, you know, so I, I think all of us can have lids and caps and, and things on us. So, um, and I knew that there were some things that e even though you have to have that entrepreneur, how you always have a solve, you always have a solution. But you know, I knew that we could, there was something bigger for us, something better. And if we focused on the things that that uh, my partner and myself uh, each were really good at, um, you know, we would even excel that much more and we'd break through our own lid, our own barrier. And, you know, it's funny, um, he hasn't been with us for that long, our new CEO, but he is exposing so many things that we already knew of. Like, they're, they're not like a big surprise, right? But I, for whatever reason, you hide them or you just don't deal with them or, you know, we'll get to that soon, but it's not a priority because either we don't know how to do it or we put a, a cap on that, or we're focused on something else, whatever those things are. Uh, but to have somebody that that's what they do, that's their focus, that's their metrics, and, and they're good at it, it happens very quickly. Like in weeks, we're, we're making like serious progress, right? So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been awesome. Like it's, it's been an amazing journey. So, and I know it's so early to say, but I wish we would have already done this. Like what are years some ago. of the things the the CEO kind of came in and saw, like in the first few weeks, that you might have prioritized differently or not? Yeah, you know what? Um, I think a lot of stuff is just like uh, because we move fast as entrepreneurs, or or uh, you know, in, in our business, and and everything's so moving so quickly. I think sometimes you just forget about some of the simple stuff like contracts with other companies that you have, buttoning those up. Um, even even like uh, some of the accountabilities that we have for our staff, like some of our staff sort of they become friends and it's not as much accountabilities or we're not really measuring the KPIs the same way or uh, may, maybe we've changed, but they haven't changed. So we got to like raise the bar and, and put some more metrics underneath or accountabilities on, on different different faucets of our business sort of thing, right? So I, I think it's just, it's it's clarity, I think. It's, it's, to sum it up in a word, it's it's clarity and they're focused on what they do best, which is 
not what we do best, right? So uh, I think, I think uh, just just looking at all the the advances he's done already, it's like it's it's moving very quickly. And and are you al- are you able now to not have to be as involved in the business? And how does that? How does did you buy your time back or what's the? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm getting more time to focus uh, on just the things that I love to do. There's still a transition period. I mean, there's, uh, and, and I know this is upset before it's like super clear. So, I mean, we're, we're moving some positions around. There's probably some people that won't be there. Uh, there we're adding lots of new roles and positions. And uh, so it's, it's, it's good. You know, there's, there's lots, of, uh, lots of new lingo. And, you know, uh, I mean, I know you know a lot about this, but all the, I know some of it, like M and A firms, and you know all the different kind of lingo and stuff. But he's very vocal in that, and just just strategic on on his thinking. Like just as an example, you know, if we're ever going to go for an exit, um, instead of just assuming like, oh yeah, it's EBITDA, it's growth, it's MRR, it's you know the typical whatever. Instead of that, like he already went to a bunch of M and A firms, and he's like, okay, what what exactly what are your value our type drivers, of company yeah. exactly like what what are you looking for to yeah. sell a company like this exactly and that's what we want to do right so like just common sense stuff but makes yeah it's it's experience right it is yeah yeah you you're buying a solution a lot of people don't realize when we hire we're buying solutions to problems and sometimes we don't even know the problems that we're going to potentially have totally in that experience totally. um Obviously, you've been through a lot of ups and downs, you know, just building all these companies. What are some of those potential like downs that almost took you out of the game? Oh, geez, you know, uh, probably a lot of things. But one one thing that I think, you know, for whatever reason, when you first start your journey of whatever, I, I like I, I believe that there's a lot of things that are put on you that you don't necessarily know that you're carrying. Right. So. Like I was mentioning early, how your parents or my parents had this this thing where you know you shouldn't be doing the entrepreneurship thing. It's it's you know it's very. So your parents weren't entrepreneurs. Not at all. Like teacher, engineer, right? Like so far from from any kind of business or or risk or any of that kind of stuff, right? So even though I had a high belief in what I thought I could do, I I still always had that sort of that aura or that thing around me that was telling me. You know, I, I, I hadn't quite arrived yet. Or I, I didn't, I'm not going to get there. I'm going to have a failure. Like it, it was almost like a crutch. I, I didn't really realize that till I, till I started looking at uh, like just deep inside of, you know, of what you really want to do and where you want to go and, and stuff like that. But uh, with, without knowing that, um, or even with knowing that, it, just because you're like, oh, I'll just like push that off. You know, they didn't really know what they were talking about, but you still carry that for whatever reason. It was things that you had on you, right? So, um, you know, for me to, to you know, sort of push through that and, and understand what that is, um, I, I probably, I probably self, you know, uh, you know, detriment or whatever you want to call it, where I, I probably hurt my own business by just having that, that filter on there of knowing, you know, at certain, like, I, hard to explain, but I, like, I almost. Did you have a belief that self sabotage myself yeah. is probably a good word of. And it was it a belief that you were going to potentially fail? So you kind of approached things timidly or. Yeah, there was, there's some of that or just um, may, maybe not, uh, not following through a whole, you know, all the way through of all the steps that I should have, that I knew that I had to do, but I didn't do because of whatever reason, I don't, I don't know. Like there was, there was definitely some things that, um, you know, I, like I, I never, I never had the fail point of like, uh, of risking like money or effort. Cause I always knew that I could sort of come through. I believed in myself that way, but, um, for a business, for example, there was a certain cap that I put on myself. And then all of a sudden you, I couldn't get any bigger than that. Like that would be, that was it. Like that was the this revenue level or yeah, size. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, how did you break through that? So that was, uh, you know what, it's, it's, it's help. Like you, you can't, uh, you know, I was reading books, uh, you know, coaches, um, hanging out with people that are, that are doing better, um, diving into their business, asking those hard questions, you know, um, and just even asking like your staff, like hard questions, not, I mean, you have to build a relationship, but like, you know, how could I be a better leader or what, 
what are some of the things that I can prove? And if you ask that at first, they're like, oh, what are you talking about? Like, everything's awesome, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but if you actually dive into that a bit, they'll start being honest and they'll be like, yeah, you know, here's, here's a couple of things that you can improve on and stuff like, oh, awesome. Like, instead of just like defending it, just, just uh, reward them on being honest with you. And anyways, once you start like diving into that and, and uh, jumping into that more and more, that's when I started realizing, you know, a lot of, a lot of growth opportunities that I could have. Right. So instead of just guessing or trying to do it all yourself, that's when I, you know, you look to experts, you, you start doing coaching, you start doing, and that's when you start to grow. I, I don't think if you just like, you know, here's your swim coach, you're going to be an awesome swimmer. Like, it, like you have to want it. You have to, yeah. you have to want to expose yourself, be vulnerable and, and be open to growing. So even if right? you could get a coach, if you're not wanting to improve this, if you're not feeling like you're hitting a limit, that's not going to solve a problem. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. And then when you hit that limit for you, and I totally agree, we got to look inward and then also get that feedback from our, our employees. I mean, that's to me the, the biggest opportunity, you know, that, you know, as a coach, I rec like I recommend all the time. It's like, be honest, because they won't, as you said, they will not tell you right away. Um, you know, the little things like, Hey, you know, you're late for meetings or you're inconsistent with your commitments, or I feel you're letting this person off the hook and you're holding everybody else to a higher standard. And those are the nuances where it's like, Oh geez, I never even thought of it that way that I've discovered has can really help somebody kind of unlock that next level. Totally. Right. Um, you know, well, as we wrap up, I loved, I love asking the question, you know, as you look back, this nine-year-old kid starting a window cleaning company. You think of the mindset and the beliefs you had back then to, you know, the serial entrepreneur that you are today. Who do you, who do you feel you needed to become to be the person that gets to, to run these companies? No, that's a great question. And uh, I, I, think, I, th I think you need to be really honest with yourself, right? And, and you need to you, you need to be vulnerable with like people that you trust, your friends, your family, your spouse, and, and really, uh, um, you know, want to actually not change, but want to at least address the things that you have, um, problem problems with, or, or things that you can't like, no one just does everything awesome. Right. And I, I think, I think just, just being aware of that and being aware that, uh, you know, that you can, you don't have to do everything yourself. You can actually, you can ask for help and people will actually answer and, and help you, right? In all faucets of life. I mean, I think like looking back, that's one thing I truly did not do. I just tried to always do everything by myself and, you know, just just hold everything inside all the time. But but sometimes it was just as easy as just asking a question or, or you know, like uh, getting getting real. And uh, so that that's probably the... I mean, just looking back at the biggest thing, that's definitely something that I wish I would have done earlier, but I'm glad I'm doing it now because it's because that's when the growth really starts happening. That's when you're that's when I, I feel anyways. So when, when things start to take off, that's super cool, man. Well, I appreciate yeah. um, the stories, the opportunity to, to learn from your journey and uh, excited to continue seeing the decades ahead of us. I mean, that's the cool part is we got a whole lot of creating ahead of us. So uh, totally. how do people find you online? Yeah, you know what? Facebook, uh, just uh, even a drop fight, reaching out directly. So yeah, that's yeah. the best way. Awesome. Definitely. Cool. Well, I'm sure people are going to reach out, tell you how much they appreciate the wisdom. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, watching your journey. Awesome. Thanks, awesome. man. Awesome. Thanks, all.